I am working uh, with a variety of researchers across the United States to try to understand the true status of butterflies. There are 800 species of butterflies in the United States. And as you can imagine, that's a large fauna to try to really understand status. And there are data sets that can help us. So I'm trying to work with all these great, great scientists to try to pull these data sets into one place so we can get a true picture of, of the status and if, if species are in decline. We are in the middle of this, and uh, what we found though so far is disconcerting. We've been looking at data set after data set and really have come to the conclusion anecdotally to start with, uh, but now with more data, which we still need to add to, that uh, of course our rare, always rare butterflies are in decline and in trouble, and they have been for, for decades. But now we're seeing something new, which is a decline in our, our formerly common, widespread, uh, geographically widespread species, which is, which is really disconcerting. You know, our wide, uh, what most widespread species, and probably the uh, butterfly that almost every uh, every American knows, as well as Canadian and, and actually Mexican, is the monarch. And it is a species that uh, overwinters in California, or sorry, in California and Mexico, and then spreads out across the nation in successive generations, and is amazing in that the last generation flies back to its overwintering sites without ever being there before. So it's got a fascinating life history uh, in and amongst itself and is, is really uh, a butterfly that I think most Americans would, uh, would be able to identify. And uh, really, unfortunately, we've seen in the last two decades an almost 90% decline uh, in monarch butterflies. And uh, that's really disconcerting when we have this species that I grew up with in Nebraska. If you grew up in Minnesota, you certainly grew up with monarchs. In California, you grew up with monarchs. And now our kids, our grandkids may not be able to see those animals. There are a variety of data and our goal now is to pull all that data into one place and hopefully to do a state of the butterflies in North America uh, paper that pulls all these disparate data sets into one place and, and starts to look beyond which butterflies are imperiled to what butterflies are in decline. Because I think, um, and, and there's a distinction there. So once something's imperiled, it's kind of it's going into the emergency room. And we need to take action now, we need to take swift action. If a butterfly is just starting to be in decline, we may have many, many more options for its conservation, so it never has to go into the emergency room. So I think this data can really help us to, to guide our efforts. We have a variety of next steps, and as I said in my talk today, is we can't, as conservationists, we can't wait for perfect data. Um, we never will ha know everything about these systems. And so we had an incredible group in our symposium of butterfly conservationists who are working on species-specific conservation, as well as those that are working on landscape conservation. And, and my goal at the Xerces Society is to meld those. There are certain times when we have to focus on the species. If the species is endangered, if it may wink out uh, like the Xerces blue did in San Francisco in the 1940s, we need to make sure that doesn't happen. But there are a variety of actions we can take in all landscapes to conserve butterflies. Uh, farms, in urban areas, roadsides, uh, of course, our natural areas. So that's number one. I really have implored all of our land management agencies to start thinking about butterfly conservation in their land management. Number two, we're gonna be convening a group uh, to pull together, to start to pull together all these data sets and start to uh, figure out how we make sense of them, how we, uh, data can overwhelm you when you have a lot of data. And so we need to really specifically talk about which are the useful data sets, how we pull those into something that uh, is coherent and makes sense so that we can make decisions down the road.